Okay, good morning, everybody. So my name is Steve Devlin, um, and I'm one of the interim assistant SEN service managers with Hampton County Council. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague Alistair Hines. Hello. Yes, I'm Alistair Hines. I'm the uh, new assistant service manager for development work, uh, of which the EHC hub is part of my remit. So just to recap, last time I was here was in May. Uh, and I believe we recorded that session as well. Um, so good to refer to. And in that session, uh, it was a bit broader than today's session. So in the last session, we talked about uh, annual reviews in, in the broad sense in terms of the process. I clarified the process for annual reviews and the timescales around annual reviews. And then I talked through the, the wider plans that uh, the SEN service has for managing reviews going forward. And, you know, when, I'm not going to cover uh, a lot of that because we covered that in May uh, and the video is there to refer to. What, what I got from the feedback uh, from that session um, at the time uh, and then picking up with, with Joe afterwards really was that the hub is the big thing people want to know about. So that's why Alistair is, is joining me this morning. He's, uh, he's the man with the hub that will, will take you through from a parent's perspective how it all works and we'll be able to answer questions on on reviews in the hub. Um, really, we're, we're going to focus on that. So when you do have questions, if you could try to focus them on the hub specifically when it comes to annual reviews, uh, not really going to go into anything individual and not going to go back over the review process unless it's for, for clarity. So it really is um, carrying on from the, the last session in May and we're, we're focused on how annual reviews can work in the hub. So I'll give you a quick recap um, on the hub and how it works and how it fits into the wider plans and, and what it will mean for parents before we move into the practical side of it. We start to view the hub in the test environment and show you what it will look like in terms of reviews. What I would say as well is I, I have a very, very strong uh, suspicion that the future is, is digital when it comes to SCN in general. Uh, and that's based on conversations I've had with colleagues in the Department for Education. Um, so I, I really would keep that in mind that what we are doing is we're using the hub as, as our tool to manage our assessments and our tool to manage annual reviews. One of the things that I talked about in the session in May was the challenges that, that all local authorities have when it comes to managing reviews, but specifically to Hampshire with the, the large number of plans we have to maintain and to review uh, and alongside all the other strategy work that we do as well. And really where I'm going with this is Alistair and I are, and, and, and the council in general are committed to, to working with you and making the hub as, as an easier process as possible. That's part of why we're here. And towards the end, we'll talk about the support arrangements for the hub. But, but really I'm, I'm, I'm preempting any questions about difficulties using the hub and, and just making sure we've all got the expectation that, that this is what, this is our system. This is what we're using. This is what we're signed up to. And we're not going to reverse the decision on that, you know. So the hub is the way that we are going to, to manage our reviews going forward. Uh, please do refer back to the May session for the wider context as in why we're going to use the hub. But just because, you know, when I, I expect there's going to be lots of questions about the hub and I, I want lots of questions, but I don't want anyone to to be under the impression that we're, we're suddenly not going to use the hub. That's that's not where we're going with this. OK, so quick recap on the hub and how it functions generally with annual reviews. If you're OK to move me on, Alistair. So quick, quick recap. So at the last session, Am I, is that the people hearing other voices? I'm not sure where they're coming from. If, if we could all mute, that would be really helpful. I can't see who it is, Steve, because I can't mute them. Thanks. If, if everybody else who's, who's on the call, if they could just make sure they're muted, that's, that's going to be incredibly helpful for us. Thank you. And for the recording as well. OK, we'll, we'll press ahead. So so quick recap then on. The Steve, are you hearing other voices? Is there, are other people hearing other voices or is it only me who's getting cross wires? OK, it's me. Don't worry. I can hear some some very faint background music and I can hear some traffic going past my window. 
Okay, so so quick recap then. So the hub in wider terms when it comes to, to EHCPs and, and annual reviews. So, so the hub is designed to work the way the annual review process currently works. Um, I've been doing uh, sessions for schools uh, on both the banding system and annual reviews, and I've taken them through this. And one of the key messages that, that I've been given, and I'll give exactly the same key message to everybody today, is the hub's not about duplication. The hub is about moving from a paper-based system to a digital system, an online system, but it's built upon exactly the same principles of co-production, of having meetings, et cetera, uh, the way the, the annual review is meant to work. So if we remember back in May, I set out uh, the whole process of review, what happens before review, at the review meeting, following the review meeting, and then separating out and mending as a separate process. And just to recap that the hub is designed to do all that. So the, through the hub, you can send invitations and collect advice and contributions. Uh, those contributions are visible. You can make a record of the review meeting itself. Uh, a report is produced the same way as a report is produced now. That's uploaded at the click of a button um, through to, to the county council. And decisions, much like uh, new EHCPs, they're published uh, and notified through the hub. So it's what happens now on a paper basis in schools and, and other settings, but it's it's doing that in a digital format, and that's that's what the hub is designed to do. And going back to that that comment earlier, that that we very much see that that this is the future of of Sen generally. So a really key important message, just to make absolutely clear for everybody. The hub isn't designed to replace meetings. It isn't moving everything to being online. The meeting is still a, a, a very important part of the annual review process. All those really valuable discussions and recommendations still come out of the meeting. So it's not designed uh, to replace those meetings, just to so be really clear on that. Okay, Alistair. So I talked about the options that the, the hub presents for, for the local authority. So there's, there's two routes essentially to, to review uh, an EHCP using the hub. Our preferred route is obviously route A, and that is where a school or a setting will hold the, the review within the hub. Um, so it, it literally, whether we're doing it in real time or whether it's uploaded slightly later by the setting, but the setting itself is using the hub to, to record and to manage that review process. Then when the report is ready to be generated, it's a click and it's, it's there on the hub ready for review. There is a secondary option that we have is that um, settings are able to hold the review the way they are now. It's a paper based exercise. It comes into the local authority. Then we process the review at our end, but it ends up in the same place, whichever route we, we use, whether it's route A or route B we still find ourselves with a, a report of the, the annual review meeting being on the hub itself. Clearly route A is what we want to do. It, it hugely cuts down the administration time um, for us in the SEN service, um, but we're realistic about the, the journey to getting all of our settings to, to over to route A. So we, we have options there. Uh, and then the, the right side of that slide is just to be clear, you know, the three options that we have as part of the review process whether we decide to maintain, whether we decide to cease, or whether we decide to amend. So short recap there on the options available to the hub. Okay. So what does this mean for reports? So the hub is designed to capture the review meeting the same way an annual re review report does now. Uh, it's Again, it's moving us over to, to a digital way of doing what we're already doing. Meetings take place as they've always have done. The school can use the hub to record the meeting discussions and produce the report. Documents can be uploaded. Now this is a really key point. At various points in the review process, documents can be uploaded. That can be before, during, or, or after the, the, the meeting itself. So that gives us options. So if parents want to provide additional uh, advice as part of that process uh, or Part, anywhere in the review process, uh, evidence becomes available that, that we need to consider as part of the review that can be uploaded at various stages across the review process. School or, or setting then can submit the report uh, and, and we as a service and parents can see the report once it's been uploaded. Uh, and then decisions can be made once that's uploaded. Um, it's there on the hub. It's not some, if, 
if we're using Route A, it's something that's already there. And we're able to review that whole review and publish our decision all via the hub. Okay. When are we moving to the system? So if you recall back, anyone that was here in May, we talked about something called the legacy program. So uh, in order for us to use the hub to be able to process annual reviews, we need to have EHCPs uh, and associated information and reports available on the hub in order for us to do that. So that's part of what we call our legacy program, which is a, a, a two part piece of work. There's a work um, that the provider does so creating a space, a profile for every young person we maintain in the HCP for on the hub. Uh, and that's a behind the scenes piece of work that we do with the provider. Once that work is done, that puts us into a different position when we can start to, to manually upload the other part. So let's say, for example, uh, young Dave has a review. Uh, he's not yet on the hub. We can't use the hub to process that review until the legacy work's been done with the provider and Alistair will be able to update us uh, as where we are on that and then as part of the process uh, we as an SEN service will have to manually upload from our end from our electronic files the EHCP along with the the appropriate advice that we need so that's quite a big program if we think about the number of EHCPs we have so we that will spread over a, a period of time. That's not a quick and easy piece of work with the number of EHCPs we have. So alongside that, we've, we've built our review program and how we're going to manage our reviews alongside that process. If we are identifying those young people uh, in, in terms of manually uploading them, we're going to process their reviews at the same time. Now, that part of that's a one-off, one-time only piece of work. The manual upload piece of work only needs to happen once and then that young person's um, on the hub already. But it means that going forward, we're always able to use the EHC hub um, to process that annual review. So it's, it's a program that runs over a period of time. Annual reviews as a program are continuously run all year round, but we are tying it to our legacy program. Uh, reviews will have the upload and decision processed at the same time. Um, and we, we're on version seven point what now, Alistair, of the hub? Four, I think. 7.4. One of the issues we used to have with the hub was that we couldn't amend inside of the hub. Um, if we had produced an EHCP first time round using the hub and we wanted to review then amend it or amend it at any other time, we would have to export that EHCP out of the hub, do an exercise outside of the hub, go through the amendment process, and then we'd have to re-import it, which is a, a hugely time-consuming process. But the version of the hub we're on at the moment, we can do all of that process um, inside of the hub now. Okay, next slide. So both ways of processing the reviews will run in parallel while we transition. So we'll, I spoke about route A and route B. There's no expectation that um, schools are immediately going to start using Route A. That's a bit of a program itself, um, and that requires a lot of support from us as a, an SEN service to schools while we support them through that change. Um, schools have their established processes for uh, managing their annual reviews, and we need to work alongside our schools and our settings to make sure that we support them uh, in the move over to the digital age, really. So we, we estimated at the time it will take about two years or so at least to have around 80% of our schools holding reviews using the hub. So that means route A. So while that happens, we have route B available to us as well while we continue to do that. We focused originally on schools um, and the HCPs that are existing. So we, we, knew, had, we have to roll the same program out essentially to our uh, young people now the HCPs that don't attend a school. So our early year settings, our post-16 settings, our EHE kids, our EOTAS kids, et cetera. So it's quite a big program when we consider the scale of it. But one of the things I talked about back in May was how we were going to approach reviews going forward. We are aware, uh, like a lot of local authorities, there is what's considered a backlog of unprocessed reviews, but we need to have a plan that addresses both the backlog of historical reviews and the reviews coming in. So our new reviews, as they arrive into us, um, they will be processed by a part of the SEN service that will have enhanced training on the hub itself uh, and processing annual reviews, um, particularly in the hub. So that's our reviews coming in. So we're looking at the, the deficit of reviews that we're 
getting out on time. I went through the time scales uh, back in May, so we know what the time scales are. There's the four week period that we have to, to process that review and conclude it from the meeting. That's one of the targets that we're looking at to, to increase the number of uh, reviews that we process within that four week period and reduce that deficit. But we also need to do something about the historic reviews as well. We know that there are reviews that, that have been waiting for some time to be processed. And this causes an awful lot of frustration for parents and for settings as well. So we, we have to have a plan that encompasses those. So that's going to be looked at by a, a different part of the SEN service. Uh, and remember that will work alongside the legacy upload as well. So it's a, a two pronged approach really to, to managing the reviews. But either way, the, it's going to be processed in the hub and decisions will still be issued by the hub. So once one of those processes happened, that's where it's going to be. It, it won't be uh, the letter sent out via email anymore. It will be processed within the hub. Okay, on to the next slide. So that, that brings me to Alistair really. So we, we know that um, like when we first started using the hub for assessments, there needed to be uh, support available for, for schools and for parents as we make this move over to, to using the hub more and more. Uh, and I, I think we, we really learned a lot through that process um, in terms of how we rolled that out. And we've listened to, to both parents and to schools about that process. That's part of why Alistair and I are, are keen to take your questions and listen to, to what support available, um, what options you need, what is going to make this process as, as easy as possible. Um, so I'll, I'll hand over to Alistair. Yes, so uh, thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, we've got lots of bits and pieces coming online in terms of uh, support, uh, training for settings, practitioners, etc. cetera, um, how-to sessions, how-to videos, um, because from my own experience working with colleagues, um, having a video that walks through step-by-step step rather than uh, sort of sharing someone's screen saying, now just click the button on the right, no, the other right, no, down a bit, up a bit, no, further left, with increasing sense of, sort of passive aggressive frustration uh, isn't helpful. Um, so having a video that you can look at side by side as to what you need to do and where you need to go um, is much more helpful. And we've found people seem to find that easier to follow along. Um, it also means that because of the systems that we use in Hampshire for creating those sort of videos that they're automatically accessible because uh, it automatically adds transcriptions um, and closed captioning, etc. Um, which some platforms don't, so it allows us to make sure that those are more accessible. Um, and equally, we've got processes in place to be able to provide support to people where accessing technology uh, is more difficult or where people don't have access to technology um, by making sure that we're um, making available sort of support and information that people can access offline as well as online as well. Um, and as it says at the bottom, uh, sessions that we do throughout the year uh, for schools and other education settings, and we're factoring in uh, refresher sessions for people as well, alongside recording those sessions. Just as a recording today's session, we record sessions that we do for education settings to show them how they need to do their part in these various processes too, so that they can go back and refer to them as well. Uh, so I think at this point, um, oh, Yes, questions. Is there any questions on what Steve has gone through already before I jump into showing you what an annual review looks like on the EHC hub for, from your perspective as parents carers? Yeah, couple. Um, but there's one for you, cool. Alistair, which is perfect, yes. which is because it really is for you. Um, what is an assistant service manager? Uh, an assistant service manager is an assistant to the service manager. <laughs> <laughs> not, I don't know how to say so it's basically. What do you do, our, Alistair? What do you do? Yes. So, I mean, I can briefly go through that. So we have um, what's called a county education manager who's currently Tracy Sanders, who looks after the SEN service and a barrage of other services too, like educational psychology, virtual school, et cetera, et cetera. Underneath that, following our restructure that concluded earlier this year, we have a lady called Jane Howarth, uh, who joined just after I did, who is the SEN service manager, overall in charge of SEN altogether. Underneath Jane, there are uh, three permanent assistant service managers uh, and Steve as our interim service manager. Uh, 
so the three permanent service managers are myself who looks after development so basically just i'm oversimplifying this horrendously by the way um is i deal with um sort of strategic development um sort of forward planning uh things like the ehc hub um diff various different strategies that we're developing uh, my colleague Claire Campling, who's been an, uh, within the service for a while, is the Assistant Service Manager for Operations. So she looks after the teams that are essentially the frontline services. Um, so looking after the teams that are doing the assessments and the annual reviews, looking after the districts and the individual children in there. Uh, and then our other colleague, Michelle Holland-Lucas, who looks after uh, areas of disagreement and uh, sort of conflict resolution so mediations complaints tribunals um and also uh sort of quality monitoring so sort of doing dives into the service to check how the various elements of the process are working in terms of um looking at how the ehc plans are coming working with colleagues and other services and uh, some of your own colleagues as well within hpcn to monitor sort of quality of output in terms of the EHC plans and the advice that's coming through. Uh, hopefully that answers the question. Yep, okay, a few others. Um, how does the hub work for those with out of county placements? I think that's a Hampshire child yep. placed in an out of county setting. So at the moment, uh, there are going, there will be some children who are out of county who have their EHC plan within the hub. In essence, everybody who's had a plan for the very first time for, I think, at least the last 18 months or so, possibly a little bit longer. It was, I've only been here since March, so it was a little before my time, um, has their EHC plan within the EHC hub. Um, so while we've been focusing our training and development work on annual reviews for schools within Hampshire primarily, we will then also be rolling out sessions to our colleagues in out of county settings so that they're able to conduct their annual reviews through the EHC hub too. But for the time being, they will more than likely be using route B, particularly because depending on where those settings are, um, if it's a local authority out of county placement, they've probably got their own ingrained way of holding an annual review um, using the paperwork that they have from their own local authority. And whether the whatever the paperwork looks like, an annual review is an annual review. So it covers the same things, even if it's on a different form. And as you can imagine, for education settings that are in the independent and non-maintained sector, so sort of private special schools, um, they can have children coming from dozens and dozens of different local authorities, all with different expectations as well. So they've often developed their own set of paperwork um, in order to conduct a review as well, because the thought of sort of one annual review coordinator getting their head around 15 different sets of paperwork, I can understand why they might get a bit miffed at trying to do that. Um, but we're working with all of our out of county placements uh, over the coming year um, to make sure that we got as many of them as possible onto the EHC hub for their reviews. Um, and we'll update individual families at those settings as and when those changes happen so that it's not a surprise to anybody. Super, thank you. Thanks, Sarah. How will parents be notified when documents are uploaded, amendments made or decisions issued via the hub? So it's automatically done via email. Um, the email is um, is sent out by the system automatically at different decision points. So I'll talk that through specifically for annual reviews as we go, so that people are aware when there are uh, decisions made. Um, you'll be informed when people upload their advice and submit their advice form. Uh, there are certain parts of the process where people can upload information in preparation for a step in the process, which people aren't automatically notified of, but you'll then see that that information is there when you're notified that the process is moving forward. For example, um, once you've arranged the meeting, you can upload information prior to the meeting actually happening. People would ne wouldn't necessarily be notified that that's been 
put onto there, but they would be notified that it was there at the point that the meeting was happening. Okay. Will the EHCP be continually overwritten or will there be previous versions stored on the hub? Absolutely. Uh, it's all about auditing within the system. Um, so yes, you can absolutely go back and see previous versions. Um, you can even see previous versions of drafts. So where we, for example, when you're going through the assessment process, and it's equally applicable if you're going through the amendment process, which is one of the processes that happens after the annual review is finished. Um, if you're going through an amendment or a draft process, you'll be able to see draft version one or amended plan version one, draft or amended plan version two, if there are different versions. But equally, if you're going from uh, a, a plan for the very first time, it gets amended and issued as a final plan, you can see that very first plan that you got a few years before in there as well. It doesn't sort of uh, take it away. Okay, question, sort of a techie question really. Not all parents have access to a laptop. Is it, may, is it possible to make it easier to access on an iPhone or on a phone or iPad, please. Also, the information is often encrypted, and it's and I find it hard to access. So I think the I think the technical side is going to worry people because you know not you know, all parents do have access to a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, so what's so the way around are, that for people? So there are different things uh, that are being done to address that, um, specifically in relation to mobile compatibility. I'm very aware that that's an issue as well when I'm trying to go into the hub off of my work phone, it's not as easy to use as it is on a computer, partly because there's so much information on the hub. And so it's trying to squish that into that size instead of this size. Um, but it's something that we're proactively working on with the, the company that creates the EHC hub and alongside some colleagues from other local authorities that use it too, to make sure that that usability usability and accessibility on other devices is as good as it can be um, because the we know that the EHC process and annual review processes uh, can at times be somewhat convoluted that's just the way that those processes are um, but we don't want to make them even more complicated by having uh, the systems that we're using which make the process easier unintentionally making it more difficult. Um, in terms of how people can access the hub for those who haven't got devices, there's diff slightly different answers depending on uh, what individual people's circumstances are. So we've got um, access, we've got access to uh, ICT equipment through lots of our public places. So all of our county council buildings um, have ICT systems that people can go in and touch down and use alongside things like our libraries that also have access to the compute to the internet and people to be able to use systems if they feel that's what they want to do. Equally, if people don't have access to technology and it's brought to the attention of their caseworker, what we've got the ability to do is just as we would do for uh, someone who doesn't have access to email, where at the moment we're perhaps sharing EHC plans and stuff by email, we make that electronic process a hard copy based process. So as information's coming through for the review, we're, we're talking where we're looking specifically at the annual review process here. Um, if your school knows that you haven't got access to technology, when that information's created on the hub by the school, they can then print off, print that off and send it out to you in the post. Um, just as they would if someone hasn't got access to email, um, they would print it off and send it to you in the post or give it to you in your child's book bag at the end of the day. Um, then they can do the same with the hub. Everything that's put into the hub can be exported and either emailed or downloaded to be printed off. We have families that are like that at the moment, for example, that are going through the assessment process where they don't have ready access to the system. But part of our internal process means that for those families where that's an issue, are we're automatically notified as we're going through the process, you need to print this off and send it to them in the post. That, that kind of runs into my next question. Um, the, the, the question starts, Steve said no letters will be sent out, so which I, I, I suspect was the general will this be the case for parents who've requested to be information for information to be sent by post will it be down to the caseworker to ensure that the parent has been sent the decision letter 
yes so it's not there's no automatic there's no as much as i would like there to be there's no automatic system that says oh this person wants it in the post um and sort of prints it out and pops it in an envelope for us i say that because there are system not not related specifically to sen but there are post systems available that can allow you to do that that's a bit like me choosing if i want my bank statement by post or not presumably well indeed and then it automatically prints it off and they have a magical machine that folds it over and pops it in an envelope of which i'm very jealous when i'm sending out letters to thousands of people all in one go and have lots of envelopes of my <laughs> are you telling me the hampshire county council doesn't have a post room i expect it does but i've not been here long enough to need to use it so <laughs> you need to get to <laughs> know them they're they important do. people the people who run the post room Alison. absolutely and I, actually i know there is because they are heavily involved where we still have to at the moment send out uh, stuff in the post for SEN tribunals and appeals. So uh, there is a post. So if, a post if a letter is somewhere. needing to come out to a parent, where does it come from then? From the system. So everything's no, system No, but I mean generated. geographically, because does it come from Winchester and someone in Winchester Correct. is responsible for it? Okay. Correct. Yes, it comes from the service there. There's always people from the SEN service in the office every day. Uh, and we've got systems in place that you sort of ensure that if you've got something that needs to go out in the post, that you notify an allocated person to make sure that it goes out. And then they let us know, just to let you know, I've popped that letter. So in the caseworker isn't in Winchester. They need to get somebody in Winchester. Not at the moment, because as you can imagine, lots we're all still working remotely from home yeah. under the current guidance. So, yes. Um, any more questions before I move on to the next bit? Uh, two others. Will parents be able to print copies of correspondence and documents direct from the hub themselves if they want to? Yes. So you'll be able to download it first and then you can do what you wish with it in okay. terms of yeah. email it. Print much, it like, much like anything else. Um, yeah. And does the hub raise alerts with either the caseworker or parents care when timeframes are up but haven't been met? Yes, they do. So it, it notifies caseworkers as well as, as parents when things. Uh, yes, that's my understanding. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's that's my first batch done. Awesome. Okay, so I will move on then to the EHC hub itself. Um, what I'm going to be doing um, is flitting between three different people, and I will try and remind you what person I'm being as I'm in the hub. So we've got the coordinator, uh, the senko of the school and the parent carer of the young person themselves as well. Um, so what I'm going to do first is go in as the Senko, who will see that there's a child on the system. It won't show at the moment on the date that an annual review is due because their EHC plan was finalized this morning. Um, so it's the most early of early annual reviews you will ever see. Um, but we, for the sake of the demonstration, um, I'll show you what the Senko will do to initiate the annual review process. So all of these are imaginary children, by the way. Um, so if anyone's panicking about uh, data breaches, et cetera, this is all fictitious information. And all of the pictures that are allocated to children are from a stock website that you're able to get pictures from, um, just in case anyone's panicking. Uh, let me just find the right child that I want. But presumably, does that mean in your system, each child is allocated a photo, Alistair? Each child on the system has the ability to have a picture added. Um, some, some schools, often parents do it. So the local authority doesn't come looking for a picture. We don't ask people to send them in, but the system allows uh, the education setting and the parent carer or the young person themselves to upload a picture if they wish to. Just some so it's one of those things some, some young people are really conscious about, you know, is having their photo places that they don't know about or of course and they're absolutely and what we do have for some children is that they will upload uh, a picture of something that they enjoy so an activity or uh, a beach that sort of thing as well a picture that represents them rather than a picture of them uh, but equally you don't have to upload one it's just a feature that's available if someone so desires so I'm looking for If 
the space. Live test here, Alistair. <laughs> Here we go, just making sure it's all got the right bits and pieces on it. Yes, so this is what I'm seeing as the Senko. So I can see that there's a current EHC plan. I can download a PDF of it, or if I want to go back in and look at the assessment process uh, of which it was completed this morning, I can see that too. Um, and this page, as you can see it here, the only difference being that you wouldn't see this button but this page that you can see here is exactly what a parent would see if they were to log on to the system too. Um, obviously, it's the setting that all the local authority that can initiate the review process on the system. Uh, so that button isn't there. Um, what you're seeing here is it's saying that the current EHC plan must be reviewed by the 9th of July next year. This is the date by when the local authority must publish their decision on the outcome of the review. And helpfully, to meet this deadline, it's recommended that the next review be started no later than the 19th of March. What that means is that it's recommending that the school or the local authority, if someone's not in a school, press this start review button by the 19th of March so that they can start arranging the meeting, requesting information, hold the meeting, write the report and send it into the local authority so that the local authority can look at it and say, as per Steve's presentation, we're maintaining, amending or ceasing the plan by the 9th of July next year. Uh, so we're going to start the review. This is what the, the Senko or someone within the setting would be doing. It's saying, are you sure you want to start the review? Uh, you, and when there are things that you can't go back from in the system as a Senko or anybody else, it will make it will double check and ask are you sure because once I press yes I can't unstart the annual review uh, without involving a lot of complicated processes. So what the Senko will be doing at this point um, is arranging the meeting so they'll be putting in when the review is going to happen uh, and the time, the end time, the location. What you can see here um, is that it's automatically going to send an invitation to the parent. It's automatically going to send an invitation to Will Hargraves, who's the Senko of the school. Um, and you can also here uh, add the Sen coordinator from the local authority into it too. So I'm going to uh, pop them on here. Uh, it's because I've not added one. I'll do that afterwards. I must not have added myself before. Um, but you can also add other people as well. So you've got the parent. If there are more than one parent that you want invited to the meeting, the Senko has the ability to do that. And if there are other practitioners involved in uh, the child education, health or care, you can add them in this way too. So that could be other people within the school. That could be other practitioners, uh, social workers, people within health or education, et cetera, as well. Um, and all the school has to do um, is say that they want to add another professional. It will ask, it will look on the system to see if we've already got them on there. And if it does, uh, it will just say, tick this box and we'll send them an invitation. Um, and if they're not, it will allow them to add them on as well. Um, all they'll need is that, that person's email address and it will send them a request uh, to register on the hub because they've been invited to an annual review. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to make up anyone else to add to it. Uh, so we've got the parent who will be invited and the Senko. So I'm going to set in the date and time of the meeting uh, and just for simplicity, uh, I'll put that on here. Don't want to do it at six o'clock in the morning. I can save that if I'm wanting to, as a Senko, wanting to come away and come back to it. But for this, we've got what we want. So it's the date, the time, the place, if there's any other information I want to tell people, the people who I want to invite as well. So I'm going to send the invitation. Um, what that will do 
uh, is send an invitation via email to those people to say, you've been invited to an annual review um, and can you please log into the EHC hub um, so that you can provide information. So I'm going to send a request now uh, to the Senko, albeit that I'm the Senko here, um, for information in the hub. So that's why it's given me that little green arrow here uh, so that I can go in and add information. But what, rather than show you how that works for the Senko, what I'll do is go in and show you what adding information for the review looks like for a parent, because that's more relevant here. Uh, so I'm just going to log myself out briefly as the Senko and log myself back in as the parent. So you can see on here, this parent has uh, a vast number of children on the system uh, that have an EHC plan, uh, just because we use the same information uh, for all the different demonstrations we do. Uh, they don't have to go to sort of seven annual reviews. Um, so we're going to log into our same child here. You can see down here in the green tabs that it's telling you whereabouts in a different process uh, your this particular child is. So it's saying a review is in progress and a meeting has been arranged, which is where we were and what the Senko had done. They'd arranged the meeting. So at the moment, let me just shrink this down for a moment. Uh, sorry, it's got lots of uh, videos of all of you in the sides. So I'm just moving that down out of the way so I can see the screen properly. So as you can see, this looks fairly similar to um, what the Senko was seeing, but obviously it had up at the top the bit that was asking the Senko to submit their own information for the review as well. So as we come through here, you can see um, that it's asking for, it's, it's essentially the equivalent of the one page profile uh, that we'd be looking at during the annual review. So this is asking for people to uh, submit their comments uh, prior to the meeting itself happening. Uh, where, of course, you'd be looking at the specifics of the individual bits of the plan uh, and coming to a consensus on people's feedback uh, on the progress. So uh, it's fa fairly sort of uh, simple questions as we go through. The system's tried to make it as clear as possible um, so that we don't avoid so we don't experience any sort of crossed wires as to what questions we're asking. So it's asking, do you feel that you, or the child, as in the child's views here, which is what this is, so this particular bit here, this first half, you've got test is obviously the child's name in this instance, um, the parent and carer's views, and also the child's views as well. Um, the child's views can also be completed by the education setting. Um, we know that there are uh, lots of education settings who work with families to complete this this section during school time um, and so they're perfectly able to do that just as you are as families too um, so you can do whatever works best for you and your family. Can I um, with a question Alistair? Of course you can. Um, just looking at that doesn't immediately look terribly child friendly when we're talking about primary school age children so if you were to give it to a child and they were to fill it in handwriting or draw little pictures or whatever is there a place to upload that which is you know genuinely their views as opposed to their views as interpreted by an adult absolutely uh, I'll show you that just as we get down to this bit here um, but yes a very pertinent question um, so you've got the bits here sort of, you know, do you feel making progress towards some or all the outcomes set out in your plan? An important question, but as you say, uh, it's a question that some people will be able to better understand and answer than others, um, depending on their, uh, their age, capacity and what their special educational needs are, obviously. Um, if it's yes or if it's no, it's just a question. It doesn't change anything underneath. Um, so for the purpose of this, we'll say, yes, I'm making some progress. You can put whatever you wish in these boxes. Uh, I won't, I won't labor through putting coherent sentences in because it's not what we're looking to, to focus on. Um, I'm gonna save those just so that they, I don't lose any of it. What you're seeing here, where there are green tick boxes on the corner uh, and the same for the parent bit underneath where there are those green boxes. 
it's for simplicity so that you know if there's a green box there it's because there's already something in there from before so because this is this child's first annual review it means that the ones where there are green boxes are where someone added to the very first ehc plan information so if i click on the one that's about things that are important to me you can see there's information but if i click on things that are working well for me at home and school there wasn't a green box because the box is empty so we'll go into one of these and you can see here what you've currently got here is the wording that was in the plan when it was first written. Um, and this was all generically created by the system for the use of demonstrations. That's why it's in Latin. Um, I don't think uh, test child speaks Latin, uh, <laughs> but um, that's why it looks like this. But as you can see here, it gives you the ability to update this, change it around, add comments to it and also uh, add files and that can be um, word files pdf files powerpoint files jpegs and mp4s so you can add pictures and videos as well um, if you wish to but bear in mind that when the while the videos and pictures can form part of the appendices of the plan the bits that go into these boxes is what goes into section A, because as you can imagine, the, con the, the size of an EHC plan, if the first umpteen pages were filled with lots of pictures, um, and obviously you can't print off videos, um, would make the plan enormous. So the content of these boxes um, goes into section A, and if there's, as you said before, where, you're, where you may have a child uploading a a sort of written version or a drawn version of their views, what we would then do as a local authority, as we would have done during the assessment process, is transpose that information into these boxes for you. Um, I'm not going to make any huge changes to this, just maybe take a word out um, and save it. And the questions for the parent and carer are fairly similar, um, other than sort of, uh, the slight wording. Um, so it's asking here, do we feel that they're making progress towards some or all of the outcomes? Again, it's a yes or no question. Uh, what do you feel is working well? And what do you think is not working well? And what would you like to be different? And again, you've got access to all of these boxes to either add information in, take information out and add documents if you wish to. Can I ask another quick question there, Alistair? Is there a word, limit on, any, a word limit on any of those boxes? No, nope, absolutely not. And what you'll see on here, one of the changes from our old version of the system is we've now got these formatting features. So if people want to put stuff in um, and have it bulleted or numbered uh, or indented. Or write it in Word too. and copy and paste or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can do that too. Um, so that you can put it in here in whichever way you wish to. So for the purposes of this, uh, I'm going to work on the basis that I have added into these bits what I wish to. Um, as, a, as you can imagine, you, you will spend far longer um, looking through, adding in what you want to say to these bits uh, than I am for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, but hopefully that gives you some idea of what that beginning bit that takes place before the meeting looks like. Uh, and it's fairly similar for other practitioners. Um, who are asked to contribute information as well, although it goes into slightly more detail in terms of asking uh, about the work they may have been doing specifically with your child uh, over the past year, how that's been progressing, etc. But what I'm going to do is log back in uh, as the Senko to show you what happens next. That one. So as you saw before, Will Hargraves, the Senko, his bit here is asking for him to contribute views to the uh, assessment. Uh, he's being asked to go in and comment on progress uh, towards the bits of the plan that he's been working on. Also has the ability to add information as well. Uh, I'm just going to fill in one of the boxes on here briefly so that I can uh, 
add information. Uh, and this all comes together for being discussed in the annual review meeting where all of these views are compiled together. Um, so it's asking for progress towards that particular outcome, uh, which we'll just say is on track, no changes, no additional bits and no changes required to that, just so that I can then save that and move us along to the next bit. Saved, good. And they can download it, work on bits of it and come back to it just as you can as parents and then submit it back to us. So I'm going to submit that back through again, which then allows the Senko to move the meeting forward um, to make the, uh, the meeting happen. And as you can see, those bits that we added before have been added in here so that the Senko can see those too. So I'm gonna progress it forward to the meeting and this would happen uh, potentially at the meeting. It doesn't need to be completed in the hub in the meeting because we're very aware um, that some people can find it quite off-putting um, if you're having a chat during an annual review and someone sat there tap tap tapping away um, and it can also on occasion stifle conversation um, if you've got the Senko or someone within the setting uh, trying to diarise down uh, on a system uh, everything that everyone's saying all in one go um, as opposed to uh, taking notes and then completing the report afterwards, which is what tends to happen more than the report being completed there and then during the discussion. So this bit might be completed in the meeting itself or afterwards, but it's not terribly convoluted. It's purely for the Senko to be able to say, these are the people that were invited and who came. Um, so we'll say that they came and the Senko came. If, if someone came to the meeting, uh, that wasn't invited initially, you can add them in here as well. So there's a record of who came. So if you've got any uh, people from Sendias, for example, if you've got any uh, other advocates or professionals who people weren't expecting to be at the meeting, uh, but have been able to attend, the Senko can add them in here as well. Any additional information about the meeting, so they might jot down here that a report was sent in via email at the last minute, so it's not in the hub, but you can diarise down here that it came in, and then you can upload it here as well if there's anything specific that they want to do. But as I say, it's perfectly possible that this particular page that the Senko has to complete might be completed after the meeting, because there's nothing here that is contingent on being done for the meeting to actually happen. Uh, and what we've worked on with Senkos following lots of discussion with them um, is that all the questions that get asked in the meeting report that's completed after the review, uh, we're putting out onto crib sheets so that it can be used to have discussion so that for those Senkos who don't want to be sat there with their computer during a meeting, make sure that they've covered off all the important parts of the annual review discussion. So all I'm going to do to finish off this demonstration um, is show you the content of that report so that you can see what bits are being covered. So that you'll see what comes into the local authority when the report is created. Um, so this bit's moved on to after the meeting has happened. Um, so it's asking people to update, is the school that the child goes to still the same or has it changed? Um, it's asking for feedback on these bits. As you can see, it's been these bits have really been completed already um, by you, the school or the child and young person. It's asking the Senko to reach a decision um, about what needs to be done. And you can see here um, where all the different people are putting their comments on progress, etc. Um, it's allowing them to see what people have commented on as we go through alongside your own views as well. Um, so that they can reach a decision about what needs to change, if anything, within a certain bit of the plan. And they'll go through all these bits here. For simplicity, there are three bits that I want to look at that aren't, not, that aren't sort of fixed parts of the EHC plan all the time, but do form part of the annual review process. One is that there's a need to focus and have a discussion during the review about preparation for adulthood. So it's asking what's their next phase of transition. So are they transitioning key stage next? Are they moving to a new education setting or moving into further education? What's their next sort of transition they have to do? And if there is a transition to happen, uh, is there a transition plan in place? If we know what someone wants to do at key stage four or further education, this gives people an opportunity to 
let the local authority know what people's plans are. Obviously, that's not fixed in place, but it's just to give us a bit of a heads up as to what people may be planning. If someone's been given careers guidance, what information were they given during that careers guidance? Um, has preparation for adulthood been considered during the annual review in regard to training, uh, to employment, to careers guidance, independent living, community inclusion, health, social care and transition to adult or other services. For simplicity, I'm not going to fill these boxes in. It's more just to show you what's here and what will form part of the discussion in an annual review. There's also part to do with travel, which probably forms part of your annual review already, um, but we will be making sure as part of the hub process um, that we ensure that this becomes part of annual reviews where it's perhaps not covered in detail already. Essentially, it's just asking whether your child's eligible and do they receive transport assistance from the local authority already and what it is. Should there be any changes to that considered? And if so, what changes? Um, and equally, if there shouldn't be any changes, um, let us know how it's going uh, and why that's still an appropriate form of travel assistance. And this information gets shared with our uh, with our colleagues within the transport service. There's also a section at the end, which is the summary of the plan. So this is the summary page where it's most important that the, whoever's filling in the report for us uh, is looking carefully at the answers to these questions. So have their needs significantly changed since the plan was issued? No, because it was only issued this morning. Uh, does the annual review recommend changes to outcomes or provision for special educational needs? So that's your section B and section F. So we'll say no. Has the person's special needs changed in regard to health? And for all of this, I'm going to say no until we get down to the bottom. Um, but what I'm going to do is perhaps up, up above um, is change this for yes, we're recommending changes to outcomes or provision for special educational needs. Um, is there new advice or evidence to support the recommended changes? So if we're saying that there should be a change in the plan, is there something that shows this is why it needs changing? Uh, if yes, then you'd upload it down the bottom. Uh, if no, then it just lets us know that we don't need to be looking or expecting anything else coming in in relation to that. Once those boxes have been completed, the Senko will save it. And then when they're ready, uh, they can either download a copy if they want to share it out with people before it's submitted, um, or if they want to just send it straight into the local authority, they can press submit. Uh, and at the point that they press submit, which I'll do just now, um, that in essence concludes the school's involvement in the annual review and the annual review process moves back into the local authority. Um, so I'm going to press submit here. Uh, so that you can see what happens next. So you can see here that what it's telling everybody is that it's currently in terms of the annual review, um, awaiting a local authority decision, which is why it's at this stage. So it's waiting for the local authority to review the report and the information provided and make a decision about whether the plan needs to be amended, ceased or maintained as per Steve's presentation at the beginning. Um, what then essentially happens is it comes back to the local authority. We can see all of the information. Oh, excuse me, that's my lemonade coming back. Um, it, you can see all the information that was submitted as part of the annual review. Um, we look through all that information, the information that was contributed prior to the meeting by yourselves and other practitioners, what was discussed during the meeting and the recommendations. And then the local authority, as Steve said before, has one of three choices to make, either to maintain the plan, which essentially means that we conclude the annual review by saying the plan doesn't need to change, see you next year, unless anything else comes up in between. Cease the plan on the basis of all the appropriate different reasons why we might need to cease an EHC plan. Um, and we would then go, we would then conclude the annual review process and begin the next process of ceasing the plan, which is a separate process to the annual review. Or if we decide that the plan needs to be amended because it requires uh, substantial changes to it, 
then we would conclude the annual review process by saying that we need to amend the plan. And then um, the amending of the plan process would begin. So for clarity, uh, the annual review process ends when the local authority makes one of those three decisions to either maintain, cease or amend the plan. And Alistair, we... is, is everything in one document somewhere rather than all those different boxes for someone to pull off? Because a parent, rather than going in bit by bit by bit, does it create a report? The report does, yes. So the report is available uh, and contains all of the information. So where everyone was contributing on the contribute views page here, so the parents and everybody else, all of these comments get moved into the report so that both the Senko, yourselves, and us as a local authority can come in and look at not just the comments that were provided as part of the views, but also what the ultimate recommendation is for that part of the plan. And then yes, that can be downloaded all as one big PDF document by whoever's involved. So yeah, the short answer is yes, it's all available in one document here as the report. <laughs> so as, as you can imagine, as I was saying, uh, at the point that we make our decision whether to amend, cease or maintain the plan, you and, and the school will be notified that we've made that decision. Um, and then the process will for the annual review ends at that point. And either there's no process that begins because we're maintaining the plan. So the next process will be the next annual review, or it will begin the ceasing a plan or amending a plan process, which are separate processes to the annual review. Although they often get confused together and people think, think that the amending of the plan is still part of the annual review process. They're just two processes that happen back to back. And I think that's all I need to show you on here. Um, so hopefully I've gone through the bits that I needed to. Um, I know that it was a bit of a whistle stop, but as we said at the beginning, and as we were talking about support, the session's been recorded. So if people want to go back and look at it in more detail and look at it step by step, then people can absolutely do so. I know something that people might be interested in would be to see where they could actually go back onto the parent bit and actually find that annual review, Alistair. Yeah, let me have a look at that for you. That one. Good live driving. <laughs> so you can see here, child 9001 uh, is uh, at the review and the report's been submitted. If you click into the child, you've then got access to all these various parts of the process. So you can come through and look back at all the bits that were there before. Once the review has been concluded, and we've made our decision, then obviously the decision box comes to life. Because if you click on it at the moment, what it will show you, once I've gone to the right bit. And you said that when that decision has been made, the system automatically emails a parent to let them know that that has happened. Correct. So you can see exactly the same as what the Senko was seeing before, which is saying that actually in terms of a decision, uh, it's awaiting that decision uh, from the local authority. And so once that decision has been made, as, as you say, the parent carer or parents and carers are emailed to say that a decision has been made, uh, just as the school and education setting is as well. You can then come in and you'll see the decision and what this will essentially do is this page will show you what the decision is and uh, provide also the appropriate letter that you can either keep on the system if you don't want a copy of it or you can download it so that you can print it etc um, or put in your own file system uh, if, you, if you keep all of these things in a OneDrive or something uh, so that you've got access to it and obviously that letter um, depending upon what decision has been made uh, tells you what happens next uh, and if the decision at that point is to uh, to maintain the plan that letter also gives you your things around mediation appeal etc and if it's the decision is to amend the plan etc then it will tell you what that process is as well 
and you you could pull off is that report little report tab is that where you would pull off the full pdf of everything coming together yes so you can click through onto these different bits up at the top uh, and download copies of bits if there are certain bits that you want to see. What you'll see on the contributing views page quite helpfully um, is that what it's done is made sure that it's left everything available for you to go in and see if you want to see it on an individual basis. Or as you say, you can go through to the report bit and download that report just as the Senko could as well. And it may not happen here, but obviously people often have a lot of historical information. Um, yes. And you sort of said the historical information is, is still available and drafts and then, well, multiple versions. I certainly have multiple versions of drafts and, and all sorts of things. So will all those be on here somewhere? Possibly not on this profile, because I appreciate this is a test profile and you may not have taken the test profile to tribunal. But um, will all that be in there somewhere? So if for a child whose plan was first created in the hub, Everything from the very beginning of when they request an assessment will be on the hub. If it is a child who uh, is being imported to the hub, so their EHC plan wasn't created on the hub, what will be available within the hub itself is their most recent annual review and their most recent EHC plan. If you want copies of prior documents, because as you can imagine, for some children who've had a plan for a long time, that's a lot of documents you would need to contact your caseworker to get the, you know, the very first plan they had five years ago, unless it's been, unless that is the most recent EHC plan, in which case it would be on the system. But if you're currently on version six of their EHC plan, because they've had one since 2014, uh, then you would see on the hub their most recent plan. And will the legacy plan put that, those historic drafts up on the hub or not? Not the really old stuff, just the most recent version okay. of the plan. If you want things that are older than that, you'd follow the process you would at the moment, which is contact your caseworker and they would provide that for you either uh, by email. It might be if you'd prefer, they can upload it into the hub if they want, if you want them to, but it wouldn't happen on a sort of automatic basis. They would do that at your request. But going forward, um, everything goes on there. Correct. Okay. And as I say, for those children and young people who've been on the hub from the very beginning, everything in terms of all the historical EHC plans will be in the hub. And just just a question about whether um, things that happened in the meeting can be reviewed after the review and um, somebody saying that they had a setting claim uh, on their annual review paper that worked that they had attended the review and they hadn't. So can that bit be, be changed? Yes, so we can go as a local authority, we're able to make those sorts of changes if necessary. Uh, it's not a simple thing to do, because as you can, as I mentioned and showed you right at the beginning, when you get to a sort of unchangeable point in the process, it comes back and says, are you sure? There's even a couple of processes for us as a local authority where it comes up and says, are you sure you're sure? <laughs> but um, just to make sure that we're not doing uh, we're not making the wrong bit, which then sort of can muck up the system. Um, but yes, if there are certain bits where there are factual errors or uh, or just sort of mistakes that are made, uh, either the school or you as the, as the parent carers can come back to us at the local authority, drop us a message to your caseworker and say, I can, the school's mistakenly put me as being at the meeting when I wasn't, or that I wasn't when I was, um, or they forgot to say that so-and-so came to the meeting as well. Would you be able to add that on for us? Uh, and we can arrange for that to be done. Is there any messaging within the hub that you can- There's not direct messaging within the hub, okay. no. Okay, one other one um, about some of the questions being quite binary by having a yes and a no, um, and would a don't know actually be beneficial? So something like um, moving towards outcomes, some of the questions feel very, very, very black and white. Mm -hmm. So I think the reason for that is in terms of don't know, without being cold about it, that, uh, that as an answer to the question doesn't add value to the process. Obviously, it's indicative of a slight concern if you don't know whether your child's making any progress or not. You ask the child that, that's giving it something it. themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And so if the child doesn't know, uh, then what you can do on here is put that into the contextual information in terms of um, if you're saying yes or no, you can put in the boxes underneath that actually the child isn't, un isn't sure what pro whether they're making progress or not. But what you can do is 
as lots of schools do at the moment, is rather than if they're not necessarily, a child's not necessarily able to answer that question definitively, they may reach a judgment basis on the basis of how they've answered these questions um, so that they're then able to give an interpretation. But as it is when you're doing section A for the very first time, if someone is answering these questions on someone's behalf, which is different to someone inputting someone's answers, if, there aren't, if you're creating the answers on their behalf, then you should be putting that in the document so that it's very yeah. clear that it's your words and not the child or young person's. I mean, that's could where be we a question saying that, couldn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that uh, whenever those sorts of suggestions come forwards, we put those onto our um, ideas platform. So we've got a, the, the company that runs the EHC hub, that's obviously not just for Hampshire, but for dozens of local authorities, um, has a website that's specifically for putting on ideas and suggestions as to what would be useful to have on the hub that isn't there already. So things like that, we absolutely take back and we pass forward and then other local authorities can contribute and go, yeah, no, I think that's a really good idea. We'd like that too. So, um, and it works. That's how different bits and pieces get added to the hub as it goes from version to version. So yeah, I've already, uh, I'll make a note of that one uh, and pop that through on our ideas hub because it's a useful one. Okay, I think I've covered all my questions, gentlemen. Okay, well, I'll stop sharing my screen for now anyway, just so I can see uh, everyone's smiling faces again and uh, and somebody's cushion. <laughs> but um, Joe's just popped out for a moment. <laughs> That's you were there right. a second ago. Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lovely cushion, though, by the way, Joe. A lovely colour. Um, yes, but if there are any more questions for Steve and I in regards to what we've shown this morning, uh, happy to answer those. And before I forget, Sarah, I do need to grab your email address because I have the information that we were looking for in our last session we were doing about, about early years. So I've got yep. that information back uh, earlier this week. Um, and I went, oh, I need to send that to Sarah, but I haven't got Sarah's email address and then forgot all about it until I saw you this morning. Follow the formula, pre pretty much like everybody else. Are you just sort My of- My name. Sarah <laughs> dot Sutton or Sarah Sutton or yeah, yeah drop so me a message, I'll please. Message it to you. Thank you. Um, Okay. Ah, here we go. Back to the, the black and white questions. Are these yes or no answers used to measure the performance of the local authority at any point? Because if there is no don't know option, then having to select yes may give a false representation of performance. No, they're not, they're not used in that way. That, those bits are purely used to allow the school or whoever's completing the review report um, to get an idea of whether people as a general consensus feel that we're moving forward or not. Um, what you'll have seen on the bit when the report's been completed is as we're looking at the individual outcomes and provision, the question's broken down a bit more. So it's sort of the outcome or the provision is doing its job, is on its way, so it's on track, um, no longer relevant uh, or needs changing. So it's not actually working. Yeah, I, just, I thought it on the transport one as well, whereas it said, is this child eligible or not? And the thing is, eligibility can change. So I think yes, no can be... People won't want to say no. Potentially, and I think but it's unlikely, well, there's, there will probably be quite a small number of children who are eligible for transport, where the answer to the next question is that they're not accessing transport, but there will be some. Um, but yes, if people want to add context to those, there are always other boxes in the system that allow people to add context to them. Okay. Oh, dry mouth. That was a lot of talking in one go, Alice, you did very well. I'm used to it. I talk too much, if anything. So uh, I can't, I can't look say anything. Try not to laugh. <laughs> OK, unless anything pops up rapidly, I think that is our lot. So um, if you get any questions through after or I know you like to put your uh, these sessions up on YouTube, uh, which uh, is a great platform for people to be able to access them. If you have any questions come through oh. on those sort of comments, always send them through to us after and we'll do our best to come back to you with uh, I was the just going to grab and I, ah, I will put up or I will on the HPCN page, I was going to put up the Sendias session on annual reviews as well, because I think it's a useful thing to share as well, which or we share mm. at this point. So we'll put the two up together because it's, it's sort of the other side of it. This is the technical side of the process. And that is sort of the, the other side of the process. Of course, of course. Useful. Okay. 
Anything else for Steve today? No, thanks, Alistair. That was uh, that was really in depth. That was fantastic. I, I hope that was what everybody wanted. That was um, certainly the the vibe I got after the last session. So I hope that was really useful too. I think it's useful to see it, Steve. You know, when you hear about it, it's very different to actually seeing seeing it and seeing it walks through in, in person. Okay, well, I'm going to stop the recording.